Dudes, dudettes, check it out. What's going on? So today's episode has absolutely nothing to do with this little career here, so I'm going to go let him scatter off. You guys are going to see him on the live that we would have already put out, so. No, don't need, the, don't need to take It's going to be in the future. Yeah, we can go. We're just going to, I'm going to complicate to everything with this. <laughs> so today we're doing a, a little simple episode. Oh, you got a little helper, buddy. It's going to help you hold the little camera. So this is going to be an unedited video, and again, like, if you want all the updates of why we're doing what we're doing and how we're doing what we're doing, uh, go to the live, watch the live. Uh, but basically, uh, we're in the middle of moving and that whole process, but I did want to share with you today something that was dropped off at Josh's shop uh, that they asked me to take. And I, oh, you got poopies. Now I can finally do a fecal on you. Look at that, a nice big poopies. So I brought them from the house over to Treetops today just to do, because we don't have to show you the setup or anything like that. If you want to do the Bearded Dragon thing, we do have an episode way back when with Brian's Bearded Dragon Fuego right over there behind him. The bam So nice and properly. And uh, he's doing phenomenal. We actually just dewormed him not too long ago. Uh, I'm going to be doing a fecal on him. Doubt very seriously that this thing's got worms, but this, ladies and gentlemen, and the reason why I wanted to bring him out is this is when a beginner reptile turns into an animal that's not a beginner reptile. So this is why when I do these videos, I'm beginning intermediate expert level of care of reptiles and husbandry of your animals. Uh, they can get from bad to worse to real shit real quick. And this bearded dragon right here is a beginner reptile. But you still, and that's why I hate saying beginner because with any animal, it's not like... I say beginner, intermediate, and uh, expert level just because of the amount of care that has to go into it, also the danger of the animal, the amount of space that you may have to provide for the animal, the amount of money it costs going forward to be able to do what you need to do with the animal, and uh, that's kind of how I base it. So I don't like to say beginner on anything because it is a live animal. So nothing is really a beginner species, but this is a good starter animal, but this is a great example of how that can go downhill really, really fast. Poor homie here has metabolic bone disease 150%. He was dropped off at Josh's place. They asked if I could take him. I do uh, I do keep a, a bunch of derpy little animals. I don't mind it. So, of course, I took him in because he needs help. Now, this guy, obviously, you could see his back legs don't really work well. He's got them closed together. So, even if I tried to open them, um, he can kind of wiggle back and forth. He can kind of do his thing, and he will kind of chase down a bug and stuff and he can eat but you can see the distortion of this animal and this is the onset of metabolic bone disease now this can go even further where if we didn't catch it like now like he's going to live like this forever this is not going to be reversed this is not fixable this is not something that we're going to be able to get him where he's going to be walking great in a year bless you this is not going to be something where he's going to be walking great in a year because we're going to be able to fix this metabolic bone disease once it's in there it's done that's it there is no cure for it the only thing you can do is manage it and hope the animal lives a healthy comfortable life and then you have to decide whether or not the quality of life is good enough for the animal that this guy being that he still eats great, still drinks great, still does his thing. Um, he's going to have a good quality of life, but he has to, like, he's, he's now disabled in one way or another. So you can see the gigantic overbite, which this too uh, might not necessarily be caused by um, the metabolic bone disease, but it is a malformation so it could be from the egg or whatever but i'm gonna go ahead and bet if i had to i don't know the history of this animal but if i had to i bet my left foot that it does have something to do with the metabolic bone disease now that happens because of two things you have a lack of calcium which they need and then a lack of the uvb which is what you get from natural sunlight and the uvb provides the d3 vitamin that allows the animal to metabolize the calcium that they need so you can give the animal calcium but if he doesn't have any uvb and proper heat and proper lights he can't metabolize that calcium the body can't use the calcium which then onsets the metabolic bone disease once that happens like i said you can't reverse it. So his poor little back legs, like you can see, he can barely hang on back there. His front legs are good, so he's mobile with those. But another thing that you'll notice is look at the scales on this guy. The scales are huge on this guy. So this animal is probably, I would say, well, he's definitely full grown. Like he's not going to get any bigger. Look at the size of this thing's head compared to the size of his body. This is an adult bearded dragon head, 150%. 
this is not an adult bearded dragon body. So basically, with the metabolic bone disease, a lot of things can happen. You get um, distortion in the spine, which we don't have that, which is good because a lot of times they get real twisted, and at that point when they get real twisted, you can't really, it would be unfair for them to live a life like that. With this guy here, since he can scamper around and his back feet do you kind of work a little bit and you can stretch him out no pain or anything like that he doesn't he doesn't jump around for any pain or anything like that so he's not in any pain he's just in really really bad shape he's in rough shape so what we're gonna do what i'm gonna do and i'll show you this on another episode later on at the new place or whatever because he's already set up but instead of using the traditional uvb bulb i went full spectrum which is a lot more expensive and that's what they sell at home depot for you to grow your plants a lot of people use them on bioactive setups because it's a full spectrum lighting and it delivers a lot more uvb than your traditional reptile bulbs do and they last a lot longer so i'm pumping the um basically it's artificial sunlight it's how we grow our plants in our bioactive setup so it sends out a lot more uvb a lot more d3 and then we're also obviously loading up our uh crickets worms roaches and uh lettuce fruits vegetables whatever we're feeding them with the calcium and then that overload with that um i just said it what's the damn light full spectrum lighting instead of the strip bulbs so full spectrum lighting which i can't show you because we don't have any here is a lot like the bulbs that we have but we use 10.0 desert bulbs 10.0 just basically means you have uvb all the way down to 12 inches a lot of people have asked me actually which i'll deliver that answer right now a lot of people ask me if the coil bulbs which brian has right there and you can see fuego right underneath it they asked me the quality of those bulbs versus your long strip bulbs now here's the deal in a setup like that that's perfect because the way that the, the cage was made, he's literally sitting directly under the UVB and his heat. So he's getting everything he needs. As far as the coil lights go, if you had a larger setup, I would go for a strip light. So I want a strip light so that I can cover the entirety of the cage because you're only getting 12 inches down with a 10.0 bulb. They'll tell you 2.0, 5.0, and 10.0. 2.0s for low jungle light. To 5.0s for like tropical, 10.0s for desert. I always get 10.0 uh, unless I'm dealing with like crested geckos or something like that. Then I'll do a lower end and I'll always do the coil bulbs for the uh, little crested and stuff like that or rachidaclis or any animal like that that's generally nocturnal that I still want to deliver a little bit a little bit of UVB. But anything that's awake during the day, I'm going 10.0 across the board because I know that I'm getting that all the way down to 12 inches. Now, unfortunately for this poor little guy, like I said, he's never going to be reversed. But we're going to take care of him the best that we can and give him the best life that he deserves. And this is where the problem comes, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody got this pet, and I don't know who the person was. I don't know who dropped them off. They could very well have cared for this animal the best that they possibly could have. But this is why I always say, do your research. And don't go on YouTube to search your stuff. Don't even listen to me for this shit. Don't even go to my YouTube channel. Don't go to any other YouTube channels. Dig into where these guys come from. Proper research should be done by basically reading. It takes a while. Like if you're doing research, Bianca, how long would you do research for, book lady? For what? I don't know, anything. If you're keeping an animal, how long would you want to do research for? At least a month. At least a month. So you got a lot of people that think that you can hop online, get a few quick answers and you're good to go. At least a month is uh, pretty much where it's at. Like if you want to know the full spectrum of what you got going on with your animals, how to care for them, then you need that full month because there's so much information, especially with bearded dragons, that you have so much misinformation on the internet as well as such good information on the internet. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Google is not an answer engine, it is a search engine. So that means whatever you type in, it may not give you the correct answer. So you have to fact check and source check everything you have. I prefer books. Uh, as opposed to the internet, but you can get books on the internet now. But what I do is I double check everything. So I will research the animal. I will research all the captive breeding that I know of. Like people send out care sheets, fact sheets, all that good stuff. So I'll put all that information together. I'll gather all the information up, see what the commonalities are for what the information that people are putting out that have already dealt with that animal. And then I'll go back to the animal in the wild. So I'll research how the animal is in the wild, where they live, what's the climate all year long. Is it arid? Is it, what's the temperature? What's the climate? 
all year long. And then what's your agricultural zone so you can figure out what you need for your animal and then fit that in with your captive care sheets that you have. There's a lot of information about bearded dragons, like this should never happen. It's very easy to research these guys, uh, but you gotta put the work and effort into it. And that's why when we say beginner, intermediate, and expert level reptiles, like we really, really say that just to give you guys like a scope of what it would be on that spectrum, but nothing in essence is a beginner animal. Like this is a living thing. He doesn't deserve to turn out like he turned out. Maybe the people did love him and just didn't know any better. Maybe they got him from a store where somebody didn't know how to teach them how to care for the animal. And a lot of times, a lot of these places just want to sell an animal. Maybe they got him at a show or something like that. They just want to sell the animal. That's the end of it. There's no help. There's no nothing after that. Uh, so maybe they just got a little tank, set it up, put a light on it, fed him some stuff. And then a couple years later, this is what you get. And then they dumped it off because he had some problems. Obviously, we know what those problems are. This one was easy for me to spot. So we're gonna take care of this guy, but this was just my fear warning. It's just a little episode in between because we have so much going on right now between the move and everything else. And like I said, if you wanna learn about that, go back to the live that we did uh, just yesterday or whenever the hell we did it. I'll confuse everybody with all the time frames. But go back to the live if you wanna see what we have going on in our normal lives. But we wanted to give you something and I felt like this was a good start because we got this guy in probably a week ago. He is doing well, like I said. We're gonna do a fecal on him, but I'm sure he's probably clear of worms and stuff. He does eat well. He does, he's mobile enough, and I'll show you guys some videos later on of him doing his thing in his enclosure, and I'm going to full spectrum light this guy, like I said, and then hopefully what we can do is not reverse it, but we can stop it from getting any worse. There were some lemur hands on that camera for you, but that's all we want to do now. So we want to focus on the animal where it's at and make sure that this doesn't get any worse, but unfortunately, it ain't getting any better. So we got the little derby derps here, so we got derp derp face right there. Uh, missing a lot of teeth. That's also common in metabolic bone disease or whatever he's losing his teeth. Big bulgy eyes. Um, calcium was there because his calcium sacs are not deflated. Usually when there is a lack of calcium, these two little bulges on top of his head are going to be sinking in. And then you're going to get a lot of hip bone showing. He does have some of the hip bones showing, but I'm sure that's got to do with metabolic bone disease as opposed to the calcium because his head does look good. So overall, he looks okay. You going to try and walk for me, bud? You can give me a little walk. So usually like any lizard that you have, if you touch them on the back here, dude, that's like the go-go right there. Even for alligators, that's how we steer them. It's like steering a car left, right, and straight. And this guy really doesn't want to move anywhere. So watch him go. So you can see his poor little back legs there. See if he'll transfer over to Brian. Come on, bud. Come on, bud. But still very inquisitive. Constantly flicking his tongue out. He eats well, so we're trying to gain him some weight and stuff, and he is picking up on his grams or whatever. So I think he'll do all right, but it is kind of sad to see. So ladies and gentlemen, biggest message in this episode, remember, oh, here you go. He's gonna walk now. All right, see those poor little back legs there? So he's got very little grip. It's kind of like a little, little scutter scutter across the way. But then he calms down and he does his thing or whatever. He can still chase his bugs down and stuff. He just looks pretty pathetic when he does it. But I still love you, buddy. Oh, jeez. I still love you. Yeah, I know. You're up in everybody's face. Um, so, message being sent is always, always, always do your research animal. Or research animal. Do your research, my friends, on the animals that you guys get. Make sure you do plenty of research before you get the animals. That way you have everything you need before the animal's there. Remember, the animal is not your only cost. You have the animal everything you need for it, and then whatever vet bills that come afterwards. So always be prepared for that. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, every animal deserves a good life. And with all the drama that we have going on in the industry right now, I feel like we should give a nice little uh, episode, a little heartwarming episode where we're gonna give this guy a good home for the rest of your life. So he's gonna stay with me forever. So now I got a little derp derp here. I got some derp derp snakes we're gonna show you in the future that I kept back with no eyes and missing slack jaws like this too so we're going to show you the, uh, those guys too pretty soon i'm going to have the, the the strangest collection of reptiles that anybody's ever seen because i'm taking in all the odds and ends but uh, i feel bad for them and i know we can help them out this one's not too far gone so that's the only thing that good that comes from this so like i said somebody probably cared for it hopefully they did but then they just kind of dumped it off so once it gets to be inconvenient and something goes on then it's just like here you go and it was dumped at josh's shop so we're gonna have them for the rest of time so we'll give you a good life from here on out but all right there you go ladies and gentlemen just a little short episode for you unedited boom out done Whee!